Hello, chemistry students. This week, we are going to be focusing on a lot of math. And the first thing I want to talk about are units, specifically metric units. So why do I want you to use metric units in this class? The reason is consistency. Across the globe, scientists have agreed to use metric units and the metric system in all of their measurements. Um, so that they can compare their data and repeat other scientists' tests. So please never report a number without a unit. And a little bit of background information about why the metric unit is what scientists have chosen to use is because they are based on multiples of 10. And again, scientists need to compare their data, so it is most convenient if they're already using the same units. Okay, so another name for the metric system is actually the International System of Units, and the symbols for these units can be called SI base units. Um, but each of these base units, they represent a value of one. So these quantities here are the type of measurement that's being done. I'd also like you to write down the full name of the base unit and the base unit's symbol. So for volume, we use the liter and we use the symbol capital L. So this table is going to be really handy to put in your notes. And we will use these units most of the time in this class, but sometimes they're not the most convenient, either because what we're measuring is too big or too small to use with these units. So when that happens, uh, you, what you can do is modify the unit by adding a prefix. So once you have this table copied down, go ahead and hit play, move on to the next slide, and we'll talk about the prefixes that we put in front of the base units. Okay, so these prefixes just mean a base unit multiplied by a factor of 10. So right here in the middle, I'd actually like you to make a line that represents the base unit. And the most common base units we'll use in this class are gram, liter, and meter. You can also think about this as a factor of 10 to the power of zero. Okay, so everything above this line is larger than the base unit. We've got mega, which is a million times bigger, 10 to the power of six. Kilo, a thousand times bigger. Hecta, a hundred times bigger. And deca, 10 times bigger. If you're gonna use one of these prefixes, it will look like this when you write it out. So let's say you wanted a kilometer. That would be written as prefix and then base unit. So kilo is the prefix and meter is the base unit, okay? Now everything below the base unit line is smaller, so you're cutting the base unit into pieces, okay? So a deci means it has been cut into 10 pieces, okay? Centi is 100 times smaller, milli a thousand times smaller, micro is a million times smaller, and a nano is a billion times smaller. 
So just one more example of how you would write that out. Let's say we want to use a centigram. You would see a symbol written like this, just a C and a G. So the prefix is centi. That's telling you how many times smaller it is than the base unit and the base unit is gram. So that tells you we're measuring mass. Now if you see in any of the uh, questions you're going to see in this class, if you see just an M by itself or a G by itself, all that means is that we're working in the base unit and there's no prefix. So that's just meter or gram. So both of these go right here. Okay, so just make that a little more clear. There's no green prefix, only the base unit. Okay, so once you have this table copied down in your notes, Make sure it's really clear. Make sure that it's someplace that you'll be able to find it easy. Maybe even write it in the inside cover of your notebook. That's how often you'll be using it. Um, once you have that ready, go ahead and hit play and we will do some metric conversions. Okay, now that you have those tables copied down, let's move on to the math, okay? The way I want you to do math in this class was with a method called dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is defined as a way to solve problems by using the units or dimensions of measurements. So you do the math with the units first, and then you add the numbers in. We're gonna start by doing a pretty simple problem that you could probably do very quickly, but I'm gonna show you how to solve this problem using dimensional analysis. Okay, so Mary worked 43,200 seconds this week. How many hours did Mary work this week? What you wanna know is how many hours. So that's the final unit that you wanna end up in, hours. And you start with the unit of seconds. Always start a dimensional analysis problem by making a little table. And then writing the number you know or your starting unit in the top left box. So we'll write 43,200 seconds. You, the next step is to put that number on top of one. Okay. In order to convert into hours, first we need to convert into minutes. So the next step of this process is to write the units you want to change into. So seconds is on the top. I'm going to put it on the bottom this time so that they will cancel out. And the new unit is minutes. Okay, so then you ask yourself, how many seconds are in a minute. There are 60 seconds in a minute. So for every one minute, there are 60 seconds. Now this process works easiest if you always give the number one to the larger unit. I'm just gonna write that down so you can take the time to copy it as well. So that's the first step of the conversion. The next step is to convert into hours. So we want minutes to cancel out this time. So now it's gonna go on the bottom. 
Ours is going to go on the top. Which one of these is larger? Ours. So we'll put a one next to ours. And let me just highlight that for you. And draw another arrow from the rule to the one. Okay. And then how many minutes are in an hour is the next thing you ask yourself. So the answer again is 60. All right, now finally, once you have all of the units written out, you double check and make sure that everything will cancel out properly. So seconds is on the top and the bottom, so it does cancel. Minutes is on the top and the bottom, it will cancel. And you're left with hours as your final unit, which is what we want. Finally, after you've done all of those steps, you're ready to pull out your calculator and actually do the math. The easiest way to do the math in this sort of system is to multiply everything on the top and then multiply everything on the bottom. Okay, then you divide your final answer from the top of the table by your final answer on the bottom of the table. And the answer is 12. And we add the unit. and box your answer. So that is how you use dimensional analysis to solve a problem. This method is preferred because the types of problems you're gonna be solving are gonna have lots of unit conversions and the math is gonna be much more complicated. So if you're used to using this type of system, the math will be much easier for you. Let's go ahead and do a couple practice problems together. Okay, so here we go. Convert 750 decigrams to grams. We're going to start with our table. And put the unit we know in the top left. Put it over the value of 1. And then we're going to put our units on the right hand side. So decigrams will go on the bottom and our new unit of grams will go on the top. Okay, so here you ask yourself, which one is bigger, grams or decigrams? So here's decigrams, 10 to the power of negative one. And then grams is represented by this line. So grams are actually bigger by one power of 10. So grams will get the value of one. Decigrams will get a 10 because there are 10 decigrams in one gram. Okay, so now multiply the top and the bottom. Seven hundred and fifty divided by ten is equal to seventy five. And then double check your units. So decigrams will cancel, and you're left with grams as the final unit. Final answer is seventy five grams. Okay. Right now we're converting 14.3 milligrams to grams. Another one step conversion. 
the unit we know goes in the top left. Over one. We want to get rid of milligrams, so it's going to go on the bottom. And grams goes on the top. So which one is bigger, grams or milligrams? Here is milli. And here is grams. So grams is larger. It will get the number one. And now we ask ourselves, how many milligrams are in one gram? Well, the difference between 10 to the power of zero and 10 to the negative three is three powers of 10. So you can write that as a one and three zeros. So a thousand. Okay, so let's multiply everything on the top by everything on the bottom. And when you do this, divide by a thousand, what you can do is you just move the decimal place over three spots. So the final answer is 0 0.0143, and we need to include a unit. Milligrams cancel. Our final unit is grams.